What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. I am Pitching Ninja, and I'm, of course, here with Will Leahy. And remember, before we get into all this, hit that subscribe button. Do us a favor. Anyway, now to the whip around the league. We're going to start with Patrick Sandoval, who had seven strikeouts and five and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs on four hits. He had 17 swings and misses this game, a lot of them coming on these sliders and change-ups. A.J. Puck had five strikeouts and five innings, giving up two runs, and he had these sweepers and picked up a sword on this sweeper. Chris Paddock had two strikeouts and four innings, giving up two runs. He had this change-up and curveball. But what I really love about Paddock is this leather face. I mean, what is up with this? Breathing into his glove. He's always done this. And it's always fascinated me. I don't know if he's intimidating somebody, if he thinks he's tipping pitches because he's going to mouth slider or something like that. Or what? What do you think that is, Will? Well, there's a lot of great baseball movies out there, Ninja, but not many great baseball horror movies. And I think uh, I think we got a new inspiration for the next one coming up. Absolutely. I can see him as a mass murderer or like uh, <laughs> Dennis Hopper's character in Blue Velvet. Maybe that's like a mask where he's getting gas from. Very good call, Ninja. Deep pull. Don't you look at me, fuck! Paddock faced Joe Ross, who had three strikeouts and three and two-thirds scoreless innings and had this slider. Nick Pavetta had three strikeouts and five scoreless innings. He had this 83-mile-an-hour sweeper, as well as this K on this elevated fastball. And I thought I'd do this overlay to show you why a hitter might swing at a fastball way above the zone. Here's that fastball overlaid with a breaky ball. And you can see how those pitches kind of look the same right here. And as a hitter, you're trying to make a decision. You make it pretty early. And all of a sudden, you're swinging at a pitch that's almost over your head. He faced Ross Stripling, who had three strikeouts and in seven innings, giving up one run and had this change up and painted fastball. Carlos Rodon had three strikeouts and five and a third innings, giving up two runs. He had an excellent heater going. It was up to 98 miles an hour as well as got a K on this backdoor slider. I thought his stuff looked really good. He didn't have the Ks like he usually would, but I thought he was aggressive, he was shoving, and I'm seeing signs of the old Carlos Rodon coming back. He faced Merrill Kelly, who had four strikeouts and in seven innings, giving up two runs. Kelly got Ks on his slider, his changeup, and if you've noticed, there's a new shape on his slider. He tends to be using it a little more this season. He's got a lot of confidence in it. And that may help Merrill Kelly even take his game to a higher level. Logan Allen had six strikeouts and five and two-thirds scoreless innings. He had this fastball and these cutters. And he faced George Kirby, who had a really tough game. I mean, Kirby's on a lot of people's Cy Young list preseason, but he gave up eight earned runs in three and two-thirds innings with two strikeouts. He did have this wicked splitter that, of course, had a runner reach base on a drop third strike with Kirby's luck. And to show Kirby's luck this game, this is what happened all in the first inning. So you see, some of this was due to Kirby not being effective, but other was just due to bad luck. Joe Musgrove had seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up one run. He had this elevated fastball for a sword and these nasty sliders. He faced Zach Thompson, who had five strikeouts in five innings, giving up three runs. Thompson got a K on this fastball which the Ripper missed the stab. Ripper is not in mid-season uh -huh. form. And then he got a strikeout on this fork ball off the plate, and the Ripper missed it again. Is that sad. is two misses for him. I'm a little embarrassed. The Ripper eventually got his man when Ryan Fernandez picked up his first career Major League strikeout, and he put ha Sung Kim on the eternal IL. Mitch Keller had five strikeouts in five and a third innings. He gave up four earned runs but had this filthy curveball and this wicked cutter. He faced Trevor Williams, who had five strikeouts in five and a third innings, giving up two runs, and had this nasty changeup. Luke Little was the opener, had one strikeout with a 99-mile-an-hour fastball, giving up no runs. And I suggested this shirt to my friends at Obvious Shirts, saying Luke Little is an oxymoron. Yes, Luke Little is six foot eight. That's a huge bit. He's basically like a jumbo shrimp or something. Christian Javier had three strikeouts and five scoreless innings, giving up only one hit. He got his chaos on his elevated fastball, this slider, and threw a career high number of changeups this game. His changeups have been really effective, and he threw 32 of them. He faced Chris Bassett, who wasn't particularly sharp. Bassett had three strikeouts and four and a third innings, giving up four runs and had this curveball. Now to the meat of the program. Tyler Glass now had seven strikeouts and six innings, giving up three runs. He had these fastballs, including this FU fastball, and this one that got a scream out of the Dodgers booth. 
I mean, I don't know what was going on. It's like they saw a spider or something, but I love it. Give me all the screams from the booth you can get. He also had this knee buckling curveball, and I did this three pitch overlay of glass now slider, fastball, and curveball. And you can see what makes him really tough to hit. And then I show the anatomy of a sword here. You have this fastball and then this curveball that's perfectly tunneled with that fastball. And even though that curveball ends up in the dirt as a hitter, you're thinking that's a heater coming in. You end up swinging, and that curveball is nowhere near your bat. He faced Kyle Harrison, who had four strikeouts in five innings, giving up four runs. He got a K on this changeup to Otani, but spoiler alert, Otani got better later in the game. And Andrew, that brings us to our dime of the day. And this, of course, goes to show a hitting his first of the year, this 430-foot blast. Uh, actually, the first the first homer given up by Rogers to a lefty in, in three years. So what, what do you think about that, Andrew? I thought it was, a, it was a pretty good pitch. I mean, he Shohei covers more of the plate than almost anybody, and he has power on pitches that, I mean, most hitters can't do anything with. So I don't know what it is. It's a very unorthodox swing sometimes, but it does the job. Dude just pounds the ball. Well, they don't call him the unicorn for nothing, Ninja. Does he have a horn wheel? He's got a horn somewhere in there, Ninja. <laughs> Nasty Nate Evaldi had one of the best outings of the day. Dominant ace-like stuff, eight strikeouts and in seven innings, giving up no runs on four hits. And these fastballs, absolutely disgusting splitters and curveballs. And I love this three-pitch overlay. This is all in the same at bat, and this is him messing with timing. And you can see not only is his stuff nasty, but when he adds this stuff to his mix, what does a hitter do? I mean, they're just watching this, and you can't time him up. He also had the most swings and misses of any pitcher yesterday with 23. He faced Aaron Savali, who had these curveballs and sliders and picked up a sword on this slider. Frankie Montas had five strikeouts and five and two-thirds innings, giving up one run. He had these fastballs and splitter. He faced Zach Wheeler, who I thought was outstanding yesterday, with 10 Ks and six innings, giving up only one earned run and one walk. He had these heaters, these curveballs, and these sweepers. And look at his sinker movement. This really jumped out at me. This is 20 and 21 inches on his sinker and also picked up a sword on this one that ran 21 inches. Absolutely disgusting. My best pitching performance yesterday was by Cole Reagans. Reagans had seven strikeouts and six and a third innings, giving up only one hit. He had this absolutely painted fastball. I mean, look how beautiful this is as well as his cutters at 94, 95 miles an hour, and, of course, his wicked change-ups. He had a 67% whiff rate on his change-up this game, 10 swings and misses out of 15 swings, and also 10 of his 13 total whiffs were on his change-up. Here's a little snippet from my interview with Cole Reagans on his change-up cue. I throw change-ups with a softball because it makes you pronate, like it makes you stay on top of the ball and kind of and kind of like pronate because if you – try to throw it like this it you're launching that softball and it, nowhere near your partner will if you want to hear the full interview how do you get that interview well you just log on to wherever you find your podcasts and you search baseball dojo and it should be the the latest one because he's our guest this episode ninja reagan's faced off against corbin burns who honestly wasn't his normal dominant self he had three strikeouts and five and two-thirds innings giving up two runs but as a true ace does even without his best stuff he fought through it he had these absolutely perfect cutters i mean you do not throw cutters better than this look at these things as well as picked up a sword on his curveball but didn't have his normal strikeout total and in fact this is one of the fewest strikeouts he's ever had in a start in his career also, I've got to talk to Orioles camera people because they do these teases with this home plate view, and then right as the pitcher's ready to pitch, they switch back to the center field view. Give me some home plate views, please. Everybody wants to see how filthy these guys are, and it's best shown from a home plate view. Now one of my filthiest relievers, Brock Stewart had this 98-mile-an-hour fastball on the sweeper. Ben Brown had these breaking balls, and what I really love is how he raises his glove after he gets a K, almost like, who struck him out? I did. Yanir Cano, who seemingly makes this list every day, had this filthy changeup. Danny Colomb had this sweeper. And I feel an extra obligation when I'm featuring Orioles guys because they actually judge their filthiness 
based on how many times they're featured by Pitching Ninja. You know, we, last year, we kind of gauged how good you were, or anybody, on if they got on Pitching Ninja. So have you ever been on Ninja? For puking. That was you? Fernando Cruz had these filthy back-to-back -back splitters. Look at this. He's got one of the best splitters in the game, and these are disgusting. Hunter Harvey had four strikeouts in one and two-thirds innings. He had these painted fastballs in this splitter. Denelson Lamette had these sliders and picked up a save. Gregory Soto had these fastballs and slider. And in the hitting performance by a reliever of the day, actually, it's the only performance of any pitcher hitting of the day. Scott McGuff got to hit with the bases loaded and two men out in the 11th inning because the D-backs lost their DH and didn't have any other options. So McGuff gets the hit, and what does he do? He K's. Well, I mean, his pitch is outside, but he was going to K anyway. My top five pitches of the day. I'm going to go with this combo by Jonathan Loizaga. He had this curveball that was way out of the zone. Look at this, an auto take, basically. And then tunnels a 99-mile-an-hour two-seamer with 18 inches of run in that same tunnel. Hitter gives up on it, and it ends up in the middle of the strike zone. That is pure filth. And also shows you why you might take this pitch as a hitter. I'm going to also give a tie for fifth with Cole Reagans for his painted 98-mile-an-hour fastball. And this is beautiful. At number four, I have Ian Hamilton and his Slombios. He picked up seven whiffs on nine Slombios this game. It was filthy. At number three, I have Tom Cosgrove and this sweeper that broke 20 inches. I have no idea how this sweeper ended up off the plate inside. Look at this movement. At number two, I'm going to give it to Corbin Burns for these perfect cutters. Doesn't get any better than that. And at number one, it's Zach Wheeler and this alien sinker that ran 21 inches. Absolute filth. Picks up the sword and is my pitch of the day. And now for my pitching ninja moment of zen. John Cry. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Pablo Lopez for 5Ks or more, then take Lance Lynn for 5Ks or more, and top it off with Seth Lugo for 5Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?